hi besties welcome back to my channel my name is elizabeth so in today's tutorial i'll be sharing with us how to cut a milk maid dress with a queen hand neckline and a puff sleeve so if this is your first time coming across my channel thank you so much for stopping by and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back so please support this channel by clicking on the subscribe button below give this video a thumbs up and turn on post notification bell so you get notified whenever i post a new video and without further ado let's get to the video so from the top of my pattern paper i came down by one inch and then i connected that into a straight line that will serve as my starting point so from that point i'm going to be taking all necessary measurements the first measurement I will take is my shoulder to my bust point. My shoulder to my bust point is 10 inches. I marked that and then I marked my shoulder to my under bust which is 13 inches and then I marked my shoulder to my waistline which is 16 inches. So I'm going to repeat the same thing I mark on the other side of the paper so as to enable me get a straight line. And then I connected the lines together like so. So next thing I'll do is to go ahead and label my pattern. The first line is the shoulder line, the bust point, the under bust and the waist line. So next thing to do is to divide the shoulder measurement by two and then mark that on the shoulder point. My shoulder measurement divided by two is eight inches and then I mark that. So on that 8 inches mark, I came down by 1 inch for my shoulder slope. And to draw the shoulder slope, I'm going to mark my standard neck width of 3 inches. And from that point, I will connect the lines to my shoulder slope. So the next thing to do is to get the chest line. And to do that, you divide your bust circumference by 6 plus 1.5. For me, my chest line is 8 inches. And from that 1 inch I came down, by from the shoulder point i'm going to mark eight inches and then i'm going to extend the same line on the other side of the paper just so i can get a straight line after that i'm going to label that the chest line so to draw the arm or curve i'm going to mark exactly the same thing i have on my shoulder on the chest line so i have eight inches on my shoulder and mark that also on my chest line and then I connected that just like so. So after that, I'll take the measurements I have from that shoulder slope down to my chest line and divide that by two. So for me, I have eight inches there and half of that is four inches. So I marked that and then from that four inches point, I'll go in by half of an inch. And then I'll use my stretch ruler to connect the point back to the top of my shoulder just like so and for the curve i'm going to take my bust circumference divided by four whatever i have i'm going to place that on the chest line so as to enable me draw the curve and from that point i just marked i'll go into my curved rule and then i'm going to connect the point back to the whole midpoint just like so I hope you get that so the next thing is to determine how deep my neckline is going to be and to do that I came down by three inches which is the standard neck depth and then I connected that with my curved through just like so so after this the next step is to go ahead and take our nipple to nipple measurement divided by two and I'm going to place that on the bust line and also on the waist line this will help us to get the dart intake so i'm going to connect that into a straight line just like so so for my dart intake i'm going to be taking half of an inch on both sides of the dart line just like so this is not a standard measurement so if you want to use a 0 0.75 on both sides you can go ahead and do that as well so then after that, I will connect the half inch I took as my dart intake back to my bust point, just like so. So the next thing I will do is to take my waist circumference 
divided by 4 plus 1 inch of my dart intake. And then I'm going to mark that on the waistline like so. And then connect that to the chest line where I marked my post circumference divided by 4. Just like you're seeing on the screen. So after that, the next thing I'll go ahead to do is to determine how open I want the front of my dress to be. So from that chest line, I'm going on by 1.5 inches because my client intends to wear this to school as she doesn't want her boobs to be exposed. So I came off by 1.5 inches and then I connected that into a straight line and then I'm going to label that the neck line. So after that, the next thing I'll do is to go up by 1.5 inches from my under bust line just like so and then I'm going to use my curve through to connect it back to one of the dart legs just like you're seeing on the screen. So to draw the other curve, I'm just going to come in by 1.5 from my side seam line. From this point, I'll come in by 1.5 inches and then I'm going to make a mark there. So from that mark, I'll use my curved rule to connect it back to the dart leg, just like you're seeing on the screen. Go ahead and connect it back to the other dart leg like so. So here is what it looks like after connecting it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and blend anywhere that needs blending. Then extend that point back to the shoulder line. To draw the queen hand neckline, I'll go in by half of an inch on my shoulder width. From the three inches I initially marked before, I'll go in by half of an inch. So this is me cross-checking that I have half of an inch there. And on the chest, on the neckline, I'll go in by my nipple to nipple measurement divided by two plus one inch. So my nipple to nipple measurement divided by two was four. I added one inch to that, that gave me five inches. So I'm going to mark that five inches on my neckline. And from that five inches point, I will connect straight to the shoulder point where I came in by half of an inch. I hope you get that. So from that 5 inches, I'm going to go up again by quarter of an inch, just go by 0 0.25 and then slightly connect that back to that point, just like you're seeing on the screen. So this will help to eradicate any form of bulginess at that neckline. So that is why we came up by 0 0.25. So we're definitely going to cut that off. And then the next thing I will do is to add half inch of stitching allowance to the shoulder point. I will also add stitching allowance to the side. So my side seam, I'm using 1.5 inches for my stitching allowance. And then on the waistline, I will add half of an inch stitching allowance. So I can use that to join the upper part to the skirt part. And that is basically all for the drafting of the front pattern. So go ahead and label your pattern. So I'm going to label the cup area. I'm cutting two of it. Also my front yoke, I'm cutting two pieces. And then the body of the pattern, I'm cutting it on fold. So go ahead and label your pattern just like you're seeing on the screen. And after that, just go ahead and then cut it out. So for these darts, I'm going to be closing my dart like so because I want to have a single piece just for this. I don't want to have two pieces. So I'm closing my darts. I'm going to go ahead and use a paper tape or cellar tape to tape it down. So for the back, repeat the same thing I did for the front. 
so i'm going to come down by one inch and then connect that into a straight line that will serve as the starting point and from that line i came down to my chest line that is eight inches and then i went down to my waist line which is 16 inches so i'm going to repeat the same measurements on the other side of the paper so i can have a straight line and after that i'm just going to use my straight ruler to connect the points together like so then i'll go ahead and label my pattern so that is the waist line the chest line and then the starting point so next thing i'll do is to go ahead and mark my zipper allowance i marked 1.5 inches for my zipper allowance at the waistline and i also mark it at the shoulder point and then i'm going to connect those points together with a straight ruler The next thing I'll do is to place my shoulder measurements divided by 2. From that 1.5 inches that I marked, I'm going to place my tape rule and I'm going to measure my shoulder measurement divided by 2. I'll also repeat the same measurement on the chest line so I can have a straight line. So I'll go ahead to connect the two points together and then I will extend the chest line a bit. So after this, the next thing I will do is to come down by one inch from that point, which will serve as my shoulder slope, and then I'm going to go in by 3.5 inches of neck width. Remember, I used 3.5 inches on the front pattern, so I'm going in with the same 3.5 on the back pattern, and then I'm going to connect that point back to my shoulder slope, just like so. And then after that, I'll take my bust circumference divided by 4. And I'm just going to mark that on the chest line. Then I'll measure what I have from that point. I'll divide it into 2. And then I'm, I will go in by half of an inch on that point. Just like you're seeing on the screen. So with my stretch ruler, I'll connect from that point back to the shoulder tip. And then with my cover, I'm going to connect from that point back to my bust circumference divided by 4 that I marked on the chest line. Just like you can see on the screen. So the next thing is to take my neck depth. So I'm coming in from my shoulder line by 1.5 inches. That will be my neck depth. And I'm going to use my curve through to connect that point back to my 3.5 inches neck width. So after that, I'm going to take my waist measurement divided by 4. Whatever I have, I'll mark that on the waistline. And then with my stress ruler, I'm going to connect that back to the chest line, just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my stitching allowance of 1.5 inches on the waistline and also on the chest line. And then I will connect that into a straight line so after that the next thing I'll do is to go ahead and add half of an inch stitching allowance on the shoulder point I'll connect that into a straight line so on the waistline I'll add half of an inch stitching allowance that we use to join the upper part to the skirt part and I'm just going to connect those points together like so and then to avoid um, your zipper bulge, I'll go up by one inch from my waistline and then slightly connect that to the side seam. I'm sorry I connected that wrongly. So I'm supposed to connect it to the stitching allowance I gave after the waistline and not to the original waistline. I hope you get that. So here yeah, I'm correcting the mistake, connecting it back to the stitching allowance. So I'm just going to extend the neck width just like so. And then I'm going to cut out my back pattern. This is basically all for the drafting of the back pattern.
So now the next thing I'll go ahead to do is to slash my cup into four places. If you want the gathered effect on the cup to be fuller, you can go ahead and slash your cup into more than four places. But me, I do not want it to be too much and that is why I'm slashing into four places. So to spread it, I will go ahead and then leave a space of 1.5 inches. From the first piece, I will go out by 1.5 inches and then I'm going to place the second piece on it like so. Then I will tape it down. From that same second piece, I will mark out 1.5 inches. Just basically repeating the same thing till I pin down all the pieces I have. So that straight line will serve as my chest line which is going to guide me so I can have a straight piece to work with so that one will not be longer than the other. And then I'm going to trace out what I have on the paper like so. Then after that, I'll add half inch of stitching allowance all around it. And after tracing it out, I'll go ahead and cut out what I have on the paper. After cutting it out, this is what it looks like. So we've come to the end of the drafting of this Milk Me dress with Queen Han neckline. So in my next tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with us how to join all these pieces together to give us that beautiful gown that we saw on the thumbnail. So thank you so much for watching. See you in my next one. Bye.